WJET TV in Erie. This is Action News 24. we go on the air tonight, members of Pennsylvania Social Service Union Local 688 who work for Stairways Group Homes are walking off their jobs. As Jennifer Ann Koviak reports, workers will be on picket lines tomorrow morning. Union steward Bob Moses said disagreements over wages and benefits are two major issues which prompted the strike. About 75 workers are walking off of their jobs tonight and will be out on picket lines tomorrow. They provide mental health services to nearly 200 people. I'm going to tell you this. We're people orientated. We do not like to strike, okay? We'll be the first ones to tell you this. Okay, we'd rather be in there working with our clients, and especially coming on to this month, as you know, this is Mental Health Week here in Erie and across the nation. And uh, this is a terrible week to start something like this. Moses said the action is a result of a continuing failure in negotiations. He said employees and management have worked for months to try to reach a contract agreement. I hope it's very short, personally. Uh, I would like to get it done this week if possible, but you never know on a strike, you never know. We're willing to stay out until at least management will meet with us. Workers will meet with a state union representative here at their union hall early this evening to finalize strike plans and prepare for picket lines. Jennifer Antkoviak, Jet TV Action News. The Best Western Hotel on Staratania Road in Fairview is closed until further notice. Fire swept through part of the hotel yesterday, ruining the building's midsection. No damage estimates yet, but about 100 guests had to be relocated to other area hotels. Best Western operators say they're waiting for reports from insurance inspectors and the state police fire marshal. But they say the blaze, which left no injuries, does not appear to be suspicious. The secret Erie County Grand Jury reconvenes on Tuesday at the Erie County Courthouse following the Columbus Day holiday in which the courthouse will be closed. The jury will hear testimony concerning the murder of Janine Kirk. The district attorney's office also may present evidence obtained from Kirk's West 6th Street apartment, which includes notes Kirk wrote about her personal relationships. The grand jury's first week resulted in an arrest Friday for the murder of Humberto Sama. Independent Health of Pennsylvania, the only federally approved HMO in the Erie area, will close its doors next month. IHP is discontinuing its service as of November 30th. The reason, company officials say market expectations have not lived up to end results. IHP has about $2.5 million in outstanding claims. Company officials say IHP's parent company has agreed to pay them all. Erie police have been busy catching speeders with the help of a special infrared radar device that's proving to be quite successful. Action News reporter Brian Sheridan was at one speed trap this morning and has the story. 41 miles per hour. Police say that's a little excessive for Upper Cherry Street where the posted speed limit is 25. An officer armed with a ticket book awaits that driver just a block away. He drove through the city's attempt to slow down speeders. There's two infrared beams set up uh, 36 inches apart. Uh, when the tire passes the first beam and the time it passes the second beam, it computes the time and speed and it, the digital readout we have here on the, on the um, machine. At this location, motorists were given a 15 mile an hour leeway. Even with that, officers were busy issuing not only speeding tickets, but citations for suspended licenses and expired registrations. Police choose areas where the speed limit is regarded by many to be a suggestion, not a law. Most of the time, the neighborhood calls and they complain because it's a residential area and there's kids out playing and people just don't know what 25 miles per hour is. Once pulled over, most drivers try to bluff their way out of the ticket. Favorite excuses include, I'm on my way to the hospital, I'm taking my child to school, even you can't give me a ticket, I'm on my way to a craft show. And the most popular, it wasn't me, it was the guy in front of me. None of them work on the street or in court. The trap is accurate. It's proved very successful. Um, I understand it's really hard to beat in, in court. Uh, there's laws uh, saying that we can do this and it's, it's hard to beat. 
The speed zone has proven to be successful. In just the hour we were here, 15 motorists received citations. Yesterday, 43 drivers received speeding tickets when a speed zone was set up in front of St. Luke's School at 38th and Wallace. Brian Sheridan, Jet TV Action News. Five miles of life change through Erie today. We'll have that story and more coming up on Action News 24.
change the batteries. So this week, take time out with your family to learn how not to burn. Brian Sheridan, Jet TV Action News. Nearly 150 people got together to bowl for a good cause today. The 8th Annual Erie County Diabetes Association Bowlathon was held at Rolling Meadows Lanes on Zook Road. Organizers say this is the biggest turnout they've had in the history of the event. New to the fundraiser this year is a Chinese auction. Through pledge sheets and other donations, the event raises thousands of dollars each year. The money is used for several different programs. We support funding for a camping experience for kids. Um, we also support a blood glucose meter lend-out program for women who develop diabetes during pregnancy. We loan them a meter for the duration of their pregnancy. Uh, we have lots of literature. We have provided library books through the public library system for uh, people to take out books on various subjects about diabetes. Um, we also fund a program which helps people who need, need financial assistance in obtaining medications such as insulin or some of the other medications that they take. The Food and Drug Administration has licensed a new vaccine against bacterial meningitis and other life-threatening diseases. It's the first vaccine for young infants since 1964. With more on the story, here is Action News reporter Brian Washington. Each year, one of every 200 children in the U.S. will contract meningitis and other serious illnesses caused by a bacteria, Haemophilus influenza type B. Infection may lead to brain damage, retardation, and in severe cases, death. More than 5,000 cases occur before an infant's first birthday. But now there's protection thanks to the FDA. The FDA has licensed the vaccine to be used at 2, 4, and 6 months of age, with booster doses at 15 to 18 months. It's called hip titer. We believe that the administration of hip titer at 2, 4, and 6 months of age will virtually wipe out Haemophilus influenza type B disease in the United States. All this means the more than 900 deaths each year and thousands of cases of meningitis caused by Haemophilus B can now be prevented. The vaccine's approval follows extensive research at the Kaiser Permanente Pediatric Vaccine Study Center. Tests involving more than 60,000 children show hip titer is safe and effective when given to infants. Amongst the children who received um, three doses of vaccine at uh, two, four, and, and six months of age, uh, there were no cases of, uh, of Haemophilus uh, influenza disease. Infants can now receive their shots against meningitis and other Haemophilus B infections with their polio and diphtheria vaccines. Brian Washington, Jet TV, Action News. Another beautiful day in the area, but uh, the party's soon over, huh? Well, that is, sure is. We're right on the verge of some showers coming in right now. Kind of the front is just teeter-tottering just to the east of, or rather west of us. So, going to get some showers tonight, and it's going to last for at least two or three days. Okay. <laughs> the forecast coming up right after this. This is a story about a family business. No, it's not the story of the Henry Ford family. It's the story of the Clawson family. The Clawson Oil Company in Cochranton and Riceville and its subsidiaries, R&K Oil in Hartstown and Marble Oil in Corsica, provide the entire area with heating oil, propane, and a complete line of gasoline and oil products. Clawson Oil cares about your family. That's why, since the beginning, customer satisfaction has always been their number one concern. Clawson Oil Company. Call today. Dreaming of a new 91 Cadillac? Well, stop dreaming. Your Northwest Gold Key Cadillac dealers have a new smart lease offer that can make your dream a reality. For a limited time, you can be driving a new Sedan DeVille for only $4.98 a month. What's more, this smart lease is for 24 months and requires no down payment. Zero down, 24 months, and only $4.98 a month. Now that's a real dream to get into. To find out more about smart lease programs on this or any other 91 Cadillac, visit your nearest Northwest Gold Key Cadillac dealer today. Well, a very pleasant fall day. Nice way to end the weekend. Finally got a good one in here for a change. Begin, as I mentioned, there are some showers on the way. We're out in the wilds of Erie, the jungles of Erie, taking a look at some fall foliage here as we go to our data. Looks more like weeds, don't you think? Record high today, 88, said back in 1963. 33, the record low in 1967. Our high today got up to 76. That occurred about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Last year it was 53. Our low, 61. That occurred about 8 o'clock this morning. Last year it was 48. Currently, we're at 72. The barometer's falling. Humidity now at 57%. Winds are southerly at about 12 miles per hour. A little bit breezy out there. No percent.
precipitation so far, air quality moderate at 55. We'll go to the live action radar. We see nothing in our immediate area right now, just a little bit of ground clutter. Also, this northern shore is just showing ground clutter, but we're picking up showers here and also coming out of uh, just east of Cleveland. So again, the cold front's right here. We take a look at the satellite picture. Zoom it in there. There you can see it. Here's the clearing moving off the east coast with high pressure. Here's where the cold front is and all along it, cloud coverage and moisture moving in behind it and uh, also along it. So again, some showers on the way tonight and that's going to stick around. Airtime temperatures, Erie 72, Conneaut and Ashtabula both at 71, Meadville 74, Franklin 75, Youngstown right now at 72 degrees. Very nice, pleasant day. 71 in Jamestown, Corey and Warren, Titusville all 73, Oil City at 74 degrees at this hour. And the lows tonight dropping down into the, I'd say the high 50s and 60s and 70s to the south. Cooler air here, that's going to move in behind it. And we're going to show you some of those temperatures in just a minute. Very cool air moving in. For example, in Chicago, Illinois, yesterday, it was 83 degrees. Today is down to about 51. Also, Madison, Wisconsin, yesterday, 78. Today, down to 48 degrees, and showers moving in with that. There's the cold front. East coast, high pressure moving off. We've got some rain building in. Down right along this, the uh, eastern coast of uh, the Carolinas and Florida, here's rain right along the cold front. Snow out in the northern Rockies, Colorado, Nebraska, and those areas, uh, they're picking up some snow. Nine inches in a place called Red Feather Lakes, Colorado. A lot of nasty traveling conditions on I-80 West. So again, it's getting towards that time of year. Yeah, I don't want to say it, but boy, it sure is. Take a look tomorrow. That, cold, that final system moves down, stalls out, and it's going to stay there for a while. Rain all along it. We continue to get showers. Pittsburgh, though, tomorrow for the game is going to be to the south of that, so it'll stay in the 70s, and they shouldn't get too much rain there. Maybe just a shower or some drizzle. High tomorrow up in about 60, mid-60s. Not very warm tomorrow. Take it ahead one more day into Tuesday. We're going to continue to see showers as that front stalls out, and that rain will probably hold off even into part of the day Wednesday. The rest of the forecast right after this. from all over the country are coming to Erie to expose youngsters to their own type of drama. 
This includes storylines and costumes, but probably most important is the children's attention span, which has to be considered. Director Amy Lunds explains it's difficult for most children to appreciate many adult plays because kids just don't have the attention span to sit still. The shows are about an hour long, and they're perfect for those short attention spans and the kids are able to sit still and little ones really enjoy the shows as much as the older 10, 11, 11 year old children. The Emperor's New Clothes, the classic children's rags to riches tale, which opened this afternoon, has played several times in Cleveland. Another play called The Potato People is scheduled to open February 3rd. Enchanted Forest Productions is excited about its eerie debut. The Potato People is a, re is a permanent part of the Shaw Festival in Niagara on the Lake and we're thrilled to be on their limited tour this year. Uh, that's a mime to music, and it's a very interesting uh, performance. They've been to Moscow, Paris, Tokyo, London, and Erie this year, so we're very excited about that. The four shows, which include But I'm Just a Kid and The Cats, will run through April. Season tickets are $25. Sarah Johnson, Jet TV, Action News. Pittsburgh Steelers tie and all. Mike Gallagher has a little like that? sports. You oh, like I didn't say that, but it is a Pittsburgh well, Steelers Well, I don't want to get the Browns <laughs> and Bills fans upset because I have theirs, too. Okay. We'll wear those in the upcoming weeks, okay? All right. And it was certainly a good day for the Steelers. In fact, after four weeks of searching for an offense, they finally found what they've been looking for today against the Chargers. Let's go to Pittsburgh first off this afternoon. It was Art Rooney's statue being unveiled. Here's to the Chief, and they certainly played like it. But in the early going, Billy Joe Tolliver, it's Gary Plummer to give the Chargers is a 7-3 lead, and Joe Walton. We've seen a lot of him on national television today, but for a good reason. Moved to action in the second quarter. Bobby Brister will hit Dwight Stone with a 39-yard pass. He gets down inside the five-yard line. This is certainly looking like the Steelers of uh, yesteryear. Bobby then goes to throw and finds Eric Green. One-yard touchdown pass, 17-7. to The Steelers have the lead. Did you ever think you'd see Joe Walton hugging, hugging Bobby Brister? That's what happened. Moved to action in the third. Warren Williams from two yards out, replacing the injured uh, Tim Worley. Makes it 24-7. to Bobby Brister also left the game with just bruised ribs, and uh, Stra uh, Strom came on. Here he gives to Barry Foster, who ices it 36-14. to The Steelers with the win. In the Astrodome, the Oilers took on the likes of Joe Montana and the world champion 49ers, and the Oilers look good early. Warren Moon goes up top and finds Drew Hill for a 30-yard touchdown strike, 14 to nothing in favor of the Oilers. But don't count out Montana. Second and goal, he'll find Jerry Rice to make it 14 to seven as he steps up in the pocket, finds him in the outlet, and there he gets the score again, 14 to seven. Second half, Montana in trouble, steps out, looks, fires downfield, 78-yard touchdown toss to John Taylor, and the 49ers tie it up at 14. Move to action in the third quarter. Warren Moon would hook up with Haywood Jeffries to put the Oilers back up by 7, 21 to 14, as he finds them crossing the middle on the post pattern. Again, the Oilers with the lead. The 49ers would add a field goal. It was 21-17 Houston in the fourth quarter when Montana hooks up with John Taylor, who goes for uh, the touchdown after breaking a tackle, 24-21. San Francisco comes from behind once again to get the win. At Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami, the Jets had a decent lead in the game. Take a look at some of the early action, and it's Ken O'Brien hooking up the 10-yard toss to Rob Moore, and uh, the Jets are in control, 13 to nothing. Third quarter, however, the Dolphins get their ground game intact as Mark Logan takes it, breaks more than one tackle, gets into the end zone, 13-6, PAT no good. Third quarter, Dan Marino will go to work. Marino and one of his favorite targets in Mark Super Duper as Marino takes the snap, standing at his own 31-yard line, gets pressure, steps up, fires downfield, 69-yard toss, touchdown. The Dolphins tie the game at 13. The Jets would lead 16 to 13 with one minute and 11 seconds left to go in the game. And Marino would do it again. He mounts a drive that concludes with a touchdown pass to Mark Super Duper. Out of the shotgun, he takes the snap, fires, connects. Dolphins win it 20 to 16. Don't go away. We are back with more NFL after this. Find your own little place in the shade with residential awnings from Al's Awning Shop. Create the sophisticated look you've always dreamed of for your home. 
The days of the stiff, unimaginative awnings are over. Now you can choose from a wide selection of bright new colors and stylish fabrics. Awnings are durable, attractive, easy to maintain, and Al's Awning Shop is the recognized leader for awning installation and repair. Let Al's creative staff piece together a whole new look for your home. Al's Awning Shop, West 26th Street, just west of Green Garden. Attention, truck buyers. The best days ever to buy a new rugged Ford truck are here. Get the Eco Motors Auto Fed. Every 1990 and 91 truck is priced to sell immediately. Plus, Barico is introducing their exclusive limited edition 1991 Sport Ranger. Equipped with an exciting graphics package, special wheel cover, stereo cassette, dash bikes, and more. It's only $82.95 for the truck value of the decade. See it at Barico Motors Auto Fest. We won't be undersold. Never have, never will. In what may be the upset of the day in the NFL, the Indianapolis Colts upended Marty Schottenheimer and the Chiefs by the final score of 23 to 19. Let's go to some of the highlights in this contest. Steve DeBerg goes to work for the Chiefs. He finds Rob Thomas with a 21-yard touchdown strike. KC has the lead, 10 to nothing. No surprise at this point in the game. Move to action in the second quarter. Albert Bentley will take the uh, the pass. And he'll work it into the end zone, and he has to force it across. He breaks the plane with the ball. They give him the touchdown, 13-10. to KC still with the lead. Third quarter. Keep in mind, Jack Trudeau is playing for the Colts in place of number one pick, Jeff George. Here, Trudeau drops the throw, looks downfield, goes over the middle to Jesse Hester, and he gets all the way down into deep territory, sets up a field goal that would cut the Chiefs' lead to 19-13. to Fourth quarter. Albert Bentley would put the Colts up 20 to 19 with a 10-yard touchdown run with 5.53 remaining in the game. Looks like they have the victory, and then the defense comes on for the Colts. They would get another field goal thanks to an interception from Mike Pryor. You see Schottenheimer is not real happy at this point in the game. To Berg the throw, Pryor pulls this one out of the air, picks it up, and returns it deep into KC territory. It leads to a field goal, 23 to 19 the final. Let's look at the NFL scoreboard from today. And there you see tonight the Raiders in Buffalo going at it up at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. It's far night on ABC's Monday Night Football. Cleveland plays in Denver. Again, all the scores from today. Pittsburgh over San Diego, 36-14. Miami comes back to beat the Jets, 20-16. San Francisco comes back to beat Houston, 24-21. Seattle over New England, 33-20. Detroit over Minnesota, 34-27. Indianapolis over KC, 23-19. Atlanta squeaks by New Orleans, 28-27. Dallas upends Tampa Bay, 14-10. And the third, Chicago leans. Green Bay, and uh, just to inform now, Cincinnati and the Rams are tied at 28 in the fourth. Well, the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds continue the uh, NLCS tomorrow in Pittsburgh. The NAALCS continues tonight, and game one has gone to uh, the Oakland A's, and Dave Stewart got the win. Picked up a couple of newspapers today that said that if they beat me, then they can win the series. Um, you know, I, I just didn't pay, place that much importance. Uh, I just felt that if I came out and did what I was capable of doing, that we'd have a real good shot to win the game, and that's all I wanted to do. Uh, we didn't do our job offensively, and uh, Dave Stewart was tough. He's throwing uh, as well as I've ever seen him throw, and uh, it's a great ball game. They played a great game. We played kind of lousy there at the end and made it a laugh. Game two is set for tonight in Boston. Let's go to the college soccer scoreboard from this afternoon. Gannon improved to eight and two with a win over St. Vincent, five to nothing. Troy Bingham and Michael Ellen broke each with two goals apiece. And that's what we have for sports until we meet again later. Okay, thanks, Mike. Sure. And we check the forecast again. Okay, in the next couple of hours, increasing clouds, a couple of showers around 70 degrees later tonight. Showers and a low about 55. Okay, thanks, Teresa. And that's Action News, directed by Mitch Spear. Our next report to you will be tonight at 11 o'clock for Teresa Mertland, Mike Gallagher. And all of us here, I'm Lou Baxter. Have a good evening. Action News is a presentation of the Jet Broadcasting Company. If you see news happening, call the Action News line at 868-2424. For a final look at today's news, sports, and the AccuWeather forecast, watch Action News 24's 11 p.m. update. World News Tonight is next, here on WJET-TV Channel 24 in Erie.